working on a traction engine that is similar to a Mini. Part 2. Having a look at the engine in more detail. There is soot inside the smoke box which shows that the boiler has been fired in the past. In this episode I am looking more closely at the mechanical aspect of the motion work and giving it a gentle test run using compressed air. The engineering standard of this traction engine really is very good. But the problem is it falls down in certain areas. For instance, there is only one check valve. And this is where the water from the crankshaft driven pump is fed into the boiler. Time to take a look at the boiler in more detail. In the centre of the smoke box door is a lever and the shaft that goes through the centre of this lever is threaded and that in turn screws into a crossbar in the smoke box. To gain access to the smoke box, the fitting needs to be removed altogether. It is very dark inside this smoke box and I'm using a torch to find out what's in there. I was surprised to find a really large superheater coil. And what does this tell me? Well, immediately it tells me that this is not a coal-fired engine. With this massive superheater coil, it is impossible to get a flue brush down the tubes to clean them. I closed the smoke box and screwed in the lever. There are various things wrong with this very nice traction engine. One of them is it's not coal-fired, although it looks like it should be. And it also looks like the mini design of traction engine, and it's not that either. In this clip I'm trying to show the water pump, which is very much a non-standard design. Normally crankshaft driven pumps on traction engines contain the valves for the inlet and outlet. But in this case the valves are inside the bunker and they're not working properly and neither is this check valve. The general rule of boiler management is that a steam boiler needs to have at least two methods of pumping water into the boiler. This traction engine fails on the first rule. There is only a crankshaft driven pump to pump the water into the boiler. While I'm telling you about this I'm just giving the engine a general clean with a cloth. With a coal fired traction engine you can never have too many ways to put water into the boiler because a coal fire cannot just be turned off. Before steaming this traction engine I would need to give the boiler a hydraulic test and fit another method of getting water into it. It's time now to look at the motion. This expansion link mechanism is very flimsy. For it to work successfully it relies on two things. The main one being that the gland on the valve rod needs to be packed properly so that it can't move up and down. When it moves up and down the expansion link actually locks. This situation was alleviated slightly by applying plenty of oil to the expansion link mechanism all the way back to the eccentrics. And after applying quite a lot of oil to the expansion link, which then dripped onto the boiler, here I'm removing it with a cloth. The safety valve arrangement on this engine is a bit bizarre. It should have two safety valves on top of the cylinder. But it's been converted so that one of the safety valves is an air inlet to the boiler. A good idea perhaps, but by applying oil to this inlet, it goes into the boiler. The inlet to the cylinder to use compressed air really needs to be fitted to the steam chest. I put a few drops of oil into the silicone rubber pipe and now it's time to see if it works. And indeed it does. I'm not using a lot of air pressure because the boiler is an unknown quantity so the last thing I'm going to do is put 50 or 60 psi into the boiler. At least not before giving it a hydraulic test. The engine runs very sweetly. When I pull it out of gear it really does sound good. As I mentioned earlier, the engineering standard of this traction engine is excellent. It's a bit rattly when the gears are engaged, but this is quite common on traction engines anyway. I'll stop talking for a while and let you listen to it. There are two things wrong here that are immediately apparent. One is the regulator does not close fully and the other is the constant air leak coming from somewhere near the cylinder. I'll open the regulator and run it faster. Forward and reverse seems to work okay and yes you can pull it from forward into reverse without stopping the engine. 
However, with this one there is a problem. There's far too much side play on the crankshaft, and with the shock of it going in forward and reverse in quick succession, the crankweb is colliding with the bulkhead. I repositioned the crankshaft where it's supposed to be. The problem is this could happen again. It needs some spacers at each end, one behind the flywheel and one behind the eccentric for the water pump to prevent all the excessive side play on the crankshaft. The only thing stopping the crankweb from hitting the bulkhead is the connecting rod and this bends a little bit. That is definitely one important job that I need to do before I go much further. However, even in this state it runs very well. I'll stop talking again so you can have a listen. In this part of the clip I'm wiping off the excess oil that's dripping onto the boiler. This is not recommended, you should really stop the engine first. But these days I don't live very dangerously and this is the only excitement that I get. I'm applying some oil to the main axle shaft, this is where the wheels fit. The gearing from the engine to the wheels really is exceptional. I wouldn't want to fit a guard over this, it's such a nice thing to look at. I think on the original Mini design there is a guard over the intermediate gear. For some reason the regulator started to work, but at this stage I was only feeding about £20 per square inch into the boiler. I turned up the air valve on the compressor and now I'm feeding the engine with about 30 psi. And I really don't think the boiler is going to explode. I would think that the silicone rubber pipe would fly off first because the only thing holding it in place is the friction on the pipe itself. What I'm doing here is feeling with my fingers around the cylinder to see where the air's coming from. I don't think there are any gaskets. I'll look into this in more detail in a future episode. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.